Hey, welcome back. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about measures of central tendency. Measures of central tendency are descriptive statistics. Descriptive stats. Descriptive statistics, remember, summarize sets of numbers. Okay, so descriptive statistics summarize sets of numbers, and in particular, measures of central tendency, right, measures of central tendency are going to show us the center, or in this case, basically, we're the middle about, we're the middle of a set of numbers is. Okay. These are super duper handy and the first one I'm going to talk to you about is one that you probably are very, very, uh, very familiar with. Okay. So the first one we're going to talk about is mean. Mean is equal to the sum of x, right, where x is some variable, so it's all the same variable, divided by in this case, the population size, right, capital N, okay? So let's go over this. Let's sort of break this down and unpack it. M, capital M, stands for mean. This is going to be your first formula, by the way. It's on the formula sheet, so make sure that you're taking notes there, too, that you circle it. Mean, sigma, means sum the thing after. In this case, we're going to be summing x. Okay. Capital N is, in this case, the population size, or the number of people in the population, or whatever it is, people, rats, whatever it is. Okay. So mean is equal to the sum of x divided by n, right, where n is the sample size. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, just to sort of explore this formula and get a little bit used to it, we're going to do a really simple um, example. So let's say that we have a set of test scores. Okay, so x will be test, mean test scores and say that these test scores are all out of three. And let's say that three people took it. It's that simple. And let's say that this is Joe, and he got a two. And Molly, and she got a one. And Sam, and Sam got a three. Okay? So when we're trying to create the M, right, the mean, we need to sum all the x's. So each of these is an x. Two, one, three. Right? Each of these is an x. So we need to sum them up. Sum x. So two plus one is three, plus three is six. Six. And then we need to find n, the population mean, right? So n is equal to 1, 2, 3. n equals 3. Okay? So then we just plug it in. The mean is equal to 6 divided by 3, which gives us 2. Pretty simple. Let's do one more just for the heck of it. So once more, the mean is equal to the sum of x divided by the number of people in the population. All right, so let's try something slightly more complicated, maybe. And so here is um, Joe, Molly, Sam, Terry, and Bob. And each of them 
the test score, and let's say these test scores are, again, just out of three. Okay, one, two, three, three, three. So everybody did pretty well on this one. So in this case, we have three plus three is six, plus three is nine, plus three is 12. Let's do that one more time. Three plus three is six, plus three is nine, plus three is 12. So sum of x equals 12. Now n is equal to the number of numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's 5. So the mean here is going to equal 12 divided by 5. 12 divided by 5 gives us 2.4. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about what that would actually mean if we were sort of graphing this out, okay? This uh, distribution of scores has something called skew. Remember skew, right? Because there's actually a whole lot more people scoring 3, which is the biggest score you can get, versus 2 or 1, okay? So, over here we'll do our frequency real quick, 0, 1, two, three, and over here we'll put our test score, test score, one, two, three. So there are three threes, one, two, and one, one. So if we did a frequency histogram, it would look like this, right? Okay. So the mean, right, the location of the mean here is actually pulled down towards these outlier scores, towards the tail of the distribution. So if we're looking at this overall, if we try to sort of turn into a curve, it looks sort of like this, right? And here, the mean actually falls sort of in between these two points right about there. Right? So the reason why the mean is here, as opposed to here, the reason why the mean is here, sorry, as opposed to here, is because these low scores actually sort of pull it down. Let's talk about this one more time. All right, so just once more, mean is equal to sum of x divided by n. Okay. And let's do a slightly different set of scores. Let's say that this is, uh, these are test scores out of 100. Let's say this is a hard test. So Joe takes it and he gets a 50% on it. And Sally takes it and she gets a 50% on it. And Bobby takes it and Bobby gets 100% on it. Okay? So here we have just one outlier score, but you can see that really this was probably a pretty hard test. So two thirds of the class are getting 50% and one third got 100%. So really a sort of typical score, if we had to guess, would be closer to 50, right? All right, so let's go ahead and calculate it. Sum of x is equal to, um, let's see, 100 plus 50 plus 50 is 200 and equals 3. So the mean is equal to 200 divided by 3. And if we actually take 200 divided by 3, we'll get about 67-ish, right? So this is our mean, right? And so that's actually skewed so that the mean, right? So here are the scores. Uh, scores. Frequency, right? So one guy got 100. And then over here, two guys, or a guy and a girl, in this case got 50%, right? So more people are really getting 
But you see again, this one outlier score right here, right? This score pulls the mean up. So in this case, it's somewhere around 67%. So it falls somewhere in that gap right there. All right, let's do one more really basic example, and then we'll be done for today. So let's say that there are five people in a class. Um, let's keep it even more simple. Let's say that there are, um, no, yeah, let's do five people. That, that works. Joe and Molly and Sam and Tasha and Jerry. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then each of them takes a quiz, and uh, let's say that they all get 50%, except for Jerry. And Jerry actually gets a zero on it, because he doesn't know anything. Okay? So 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 is 200. mean is equal to 200 divided by n. n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. The mean here of 200 divided by 5 should give us, what is that, 40? Yep, that gives us 40. And again, if you were to graph this out, is 50 percent, is 100 percent, is zero. So the one guy is actually down here. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Almost everybody got 50 percent, but this one guy, Jerry or whoever, who didn't study at all, right? He's down here, and he pulls down the mean to the tune of 10%. So actually, down here is where the mean would fall. Okay, so you can see that the outliers matter, which brings us to one of the most important rules about means. Means are pulled toward outliers. In other words, toward extreme scores. And they can be high scores or low scores. And we call this, the technical term for it is we say that the mean is sensitive. Thanks for hanging out with me and learning about means. The next thing we'll go on to are medians. All right, I'll see you in the next video.